Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Today, we're going to look at the astrology and Kabbalah of Vladimir Putin. Uh, we are in uh, time. Today is the 6th of March, and um, he has, I uh, believe, been um, in the Ukraine now for I want to say 10 days. Um, the invasion began on the 24th of um, February and uh, has not really stopped despite sanctions, despite pleas from uh, other world leaders and a willingness to, to keep the lines of communication open with Putin. Uh, will that make a difference? Uh, we'll, we will take a look at his chart and the, and the chances of that or what might really make a difference for him. So um, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with his astrological chart to begin with. So let's take a, a quick look at that first. I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, I just need to uh, pull him up. Actually, this is uh, today. This is what's going on today. Um, it actually happened at 2.12 a.m. this morning, and that was a conjunction between uh, Mars and Venus. Um, but that just happens to be the energy of today. Uh, the moon is, uh, at that time, was in Aries and has since moved into Taurus. So now we have the moon in Taurus today. All right, let's take a look at... Uh, Putin's chart here. Let me just pull him up here. Okay. A lot of people here. Let's see. All right. Oh, there he is. So um, we have him born on the 7th of October 1952 in St. Petersburg, Russia. Of course, this was post-war Russia. Uh, things were very uh, dire in St. Petersburg. I was actually last night while I was doing this chart and uh, doing his numerology and Kabbalah, I was listening to a interview with Marsha Gerson um, that's on, that was on uh, Frontline, I believe. It was an interview. And there's actually a number of interviews talking about Putin from the perspective of all the people who have either studied him in the case of Gerson um, and the people who have interacted with him uh, in, um, in his uh, role as, 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 uh, as president of uh, Russia. So uh, definitely worth a look. I will put a link below. It gave me a lot of insight. I didn't know much about Putin's uh, childhood. He was... Um, he, he was um, the only living son of his parents. His parents had him when, he, when they were in their 40s. They had lost a son to starvation um, during the war. So, or towards the end of the war, I'm not exactly sure when that child was born. Um, but there was this sense of, um, they, they had a sense that their son was gonna be important and there was, um, he was pretty much spoiled, actually. And um, they gave him what they could. And uh, he gave them a few things, but not too much. So one of the things that uh, Marsha, in her, in her talking of Putin, was his, uh, his, his greed. And she spoke of his, uh, his fear of women and women in power, um, his misogyny, his uh, sort of um, authoritarian streak and the like. So as we look at Putin's chart, we can see that his, his rising sign is Scorpio. He has many planets in Libra. They're all in the 12th house. That Libra energy can be very uh, charming. They can turn on the charm when they want. Um, there's a duplicity about Libra. There's a duplicity about most of the, uh, if not all of the uh, air signs because air is about relating. In the case of, uh, excuse me. 
In the case of uh, Gemini, we're relating to our environment. In the case of Libra, we're relating to the other. And in the case of Aquarius, we're relating to humanity. All of that, uh, all of that energy, his sun, his Saturn, his Neptune, his Mercury in the 12th house, it's very hard to discern um, what, what he is about. There's definitely, um, and of course this tends people towards secrecy, secrecy. Um, as an evolutionary astrologer, we always look to the placement of Pluto. He has Pluto very prominently placed right at the top of the chart. Pluto on the 10th house cusp is definitely somebody who can transform the world, can transform the world. He also has his Pluto in a conjunction to his south node. This means that he has lessons that still need to be learned about leadership and power. Now, a good leader, a good, a good Leo leader would be somebody who was um, inspirational, somebody who was uh, generous of heart, somebody who put his people before him. Uh, he has done none of those things. <laughs> um, his North Node is in Aquarius meaning that he needs to move in the direction of the common good. And actually with this type of chart, had he decided to come from a better place, I think he would have uh, been quite uh, a benefit to um, Russia and to the world. However, that is not what he chose to do. Um, there is definitely an energy here around revenge and there's definitely, you know, wounded, wounded Pluto and Leo um, is narcissistic. And he definitely has a narcissistic personality um, disorder, very, very similar to Trump, very similar to Trump. Now, um, as we sit here today, um, he has, uh, Saturn is approaching his North Node his progressed Mars, he has a Mars in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is, you know, acting in a big way. Um, Sagittarius is sort of far reaching, philosophical, somewhat can be religious, can have a, a religious zealotry to it. That Mars is trying his Pluto in a, a Leo side trine, which brings up that sort of narcissistic energy. But it has progressed, Mars in his chart has progressed to 18, 19 degrees of Aquarius. So this really is his big, if not his last, and most likely his last hurrah. Uh, we just have to, you know, make sure that we can um, move through this time without him taking the rest of us along with him, right? So, so there's that. Of course, we, we can and we will and we are, and things are changing and shifting despite his best efforts. He may, be, he may end up being the best thing um, since sliced bread when it comes to bringing unity to a planet. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, very often people have their intentions of what they want to do. They end up uh, creating the opposite. One of my teachers, says what you, what, you, uh, what you try to destroy, you create. So if he's trying to destroy democracies and he's trying, he's actually gonna create them. And we can certainly see the world stepping behind um, the Ukraine in, their, in the situation that they're in. The, the, this is not the only place that has gone through this type of tragedy. Uh, it, it happens, it's happened in Syria, it happened um, in, in, in um, it's happening in Yemen, there's all kinds of places where this kind of stuff, just indiscriminate bombing of civilians and people dying and, you know, bombing hospitals and, you know, the places that are supposed to be beyond uh, reproach. This actually, this energy, I think, was awakened back uh, about 2000, and I think it was 2015, 
uh, with the rise of ISIS uh, or, or ISER. I hate to call it ISIS because of the goddess, but uh, that's really to me what it feels like things really started to, um, the darkness started to really rise up. Uh, but the darkness uh, rises up so that we can see it and put light on it. And when we put light on it, uh, the darkness loses its power. So the most important thing for us to do at this time, no matter what this chart says, and no matter what they're saying on, uh, on the media, is to shine our light, to shine our light. So let's take a look at the numerology and Kabbalah of Putin, because this is very very interesting. So let me uh, stop this share and we're going to pull up his um, numerology chart first. So this is um, his numerology and his name is Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. And uh, when we add up his vowels, which is his inner feminine, um, we get a 6511 vibration. So he has an 11 soul. Uh, an 11 soul is a spiritual light messenger. And so his soul has something to um, enlighten us <laughs> about. Um, and of course, 11 is about relationship. How do we relate to one another? Uh, he has uh, in in his in his biography in his history um, very much a, a me first kind of relationship. So his relationships will, will probably be very usury in that respect. Uh, what he can get from people um, is what he will take from people. What they allow him to take. Now we don't no normally associate elevens with that energy. But just because you have an 11 soul doesn't mean that you're well-intentioned. But what it does mean is that if you are not well-intentioned, um, this is a bit of a, you pay, you pay big time as a soul. Now his outer personality is a 77.5 that's the consonants. And so the 77.5 is how he is seen. Now, five is somebody who is unpredictable. Five is, is, is about change. Now, let me um, show you the two cards associated with this vibration. This is the first card. This is the 6511. So this is the king of pentacles. Very often, Vladimir Putin comes in as the king of pentacles. And when uh, we would do readings on Trump, very often the king of pentacles would come through. And many people felt that that was, um, that was Trump. But um, I feel like now that I see more and I have more of an understanding of the energy and because we have been going through this revel revelation process, uh, you know, we had hints, we had things, but things are starting to sort of make more sense when it came to the relationship between Trump and Putin. And I feel like when when the, the King of Pentacles came through Trump's cards, it was about Trump, but through the influence of Putin. So I think that's something that uh, that I've learned over uh, this many uh, years and months of pulling cards on these, on these two characters. The uh, 77.5 vibration is this vibration. It's the self-made person, the nine of pentacles, uh, the person sort of in their own little secret garden. He has his little bird there. I know this is a woman. He has this, this little bird there uh, that he can sort of send out on spy missions, sort of like a familiar and come back. But of course, we know that these are all pentacles. So there is, so money becomes very important to him. And, uh, and of course, the king of pentacles as a soul vibration can be somebody who uh, is, a, uh, is defined by what he has. And he's a very, very rich man because he's a very, very insecure man. He is rich because he's insecure. Trump was claimed he was rich because he was insecure. While, while Trump wasn't, I don't think, actually rich. Trump has a lot of debt, 
but I think Putin has a lot of resource, right? Um, when we add these two vibrations together, we get the expression vibration. And the expression vibration is how we find balance between these two, the inner and outer self. Well, the inner and outer self really aren't on that much of a, a different vibe here because we're dealing with pentacles, right? We're dealing with a sense of worth. What are things worth? Um, and when we add these two together, we get a 16-7 vibration, which many of you will recognize as this. This is the tower card. So the tower card requires people to be who they are, who they really are. You know that expression, if, if people are showing you who they are, or telling you who they are, believe it. Um, I think he, is, he has shown us who he was from the from the very beginning, whether we chose to believe it or not, um, I don't, I'm not sure we did. And so we find ourselves in this situation, although there were plenty of warnings and plenty of people waving their hands and the like, but Putin does have a way of getting into your head and um, this idea of, you know, not really seeing him for who he is. Now he does have in his chart, Mercury conjunct Neptune, Mercury is how you communicate. Neptune is illusion and delusion. So not only is he, does he put out a lot of misinformation, as it were. I remember his moon is in uh, Gemini, so he knows how to do that. Um, he also um, um, believes some of the things that he, so it's not just we don't see him clearly, but he is quite delusional, actually. He thinks that he's a czar, Pluto conjunct the South Node from the 10th house, the, uh, the South Node in the ninth house. The ninth house is associated with religion. So he has a very close relationship with the Russian Orthodox Church. He has a very close relationship with all things Orthodox and all things from the past and all things authoritarian. So this is the energy that he comes in with, all of these pentacles, all this energy around, you know, being a, a sort of on his own and in charge and holding all the pentacles. And then he utilizes his Mars, which is in Sagittarius, uh, because this, this card here, this, this tower card is associated with the planet Mars in your chart. So he has Mars and Sagittarius. When we get to his tree of life, we're gonna see some pretty interesting things about where all of this falls on his chart to perhaps give us a perspective on why Putin, why now, and what do we have to learn from this experience? Because if it wasn't a learning experience, we wouldn't be having it quite frankly. Uh, can we learn that maybe we should have taken him, we should have seen his actions and realized who we were dealing with? Um, or is there even something beyond that that we need to be aware of? We'll talk about that. His path of life is his birthday. Now, the path of life is also called the life lesson. And this is something that perhaps he isn't so good at. Um, and so we have a 34-7 here. The 34-7 is this card here. It's the eight of, of wands. We see this card a lot lately. Some people see it as projectiles coming down uh, fast and furious. And so um, this is, you know, this can be symbolic of how he, you know, goes about destroying countries from the air, right? But um, the, the eight of, I mean, yes, the eight of, of wands is about being able to take in, there's a lot of information coming in, being able to take that and, and understand what that means. When we get to the tree of life, we'll get a little bit further into his path of life and, and that vibration. Um, the vibration of the 34-7 also is the number is the same number that vibrates to the word mother mother so we know that there's something about mother here now is it his biological mother his biological mother was very good to him uh is it about his relationship with mother russia possibly is it his relationship with the feminine most likely 
most likely. Now, the last vibration that we look at when we look at the five major numbers is his shadow. What is his shadow? What, where is he blocked? Where is he blocked? We get the shadow by taking his first name, Vladimir, which vibrates to a 43 seven. Uh, and we add his birthday of seven. And when we do that, um, let me see, is it 34 seven Vladimir? Wait, hold on, what is Vladimir? Yeah, 43 seven, did I say that? 43 seven, and we add the seven and we get a 50. Five zero over five, and we can see that right here. Now that is his shadow. That is where his light is blocked. And this is the vibration. The five of cups is about joy and happiness and blessings. He has never really brought this to his people. This is not this is not what he's brought the Russian people at all. It's almost as if he can't see it. He can't visualize it. He doesn't almost even understand it. The interesting thing about the 50 over five is that it's Joe Biden's soul vibration. So Joe Biden really is a, um, a thorn in the paw of this roaring lion. Now, a couple of other things that I wanna point out before we get to the tree of life, and that is where, where he is at this moment in his life. This is called uh, the divine triangle, okay? And I'm gonna make it a little bit closer so you guys can actually read what it says. So each one of these lines is a nine-year line. And each one of these squares is a 27 year period of time. This first 27 years of life is called the youth square, Y-O-U-T-H, youth square, or as we say in Brooklyn, the youth square. So this is connected to his past lives and also his childhood. Now, when you have a nine there, Nine is about, generally, is about a crime. So a crime was committed, a crime, he could have committed a crime during this period of time. He could have been, um, he could have been the victim of a crime. It is, the nine is the highest and the lowest of all expressions of humanity. Now, the nine is also associate, can be associated with bitterness and revenge. And so if he is able to navigate past his, all this karma that sort of comes with his previous lifetimes with, you know, his, his uh, and his childhood, our childhood tends to express um, something that has to do with our last lifetime, what issues were still not necessarily um, resolved. Now his next 27 years of life, this is at age 27, 36, 45, 54, right? That's how that goes, is a 33 over six vibration. And, you know, I think I'm gonna pull these cards out so you can get a, a visual. Now the power square determines how well we can um, build our power, navigate the world through uh, a successful healing of that 45.9 vibration. So let's look at the 45.9 vibration first. This is the nine of, I mean, excuse me, the five of cups. Interestingly enough, this is the soul vibration of the US the soul vibration of the US. And of course, Donald Trump was the 45th president, was he not? So we can see these connections with resentment and from the past and a sense perhaps of being betrayed. Um, one of the things that Leo requires is loyalty. And he does have that Pluto and Leo, but it is conjunct his south node. So he needs to learn how to be loyal to the people, right? Aquarius, um, but he is still stuck in this place of 
um, of, of the wounds. Of, it's like he can't see the joy. He can't even connect with the joy of life on earth and how beautiful it can be. Because all he really connects with is how he can extract what he can from life with no regard for the happiness, joy, love, compassion of other people. It's in the chart. It's in the chart. The 33 over six vibration is a master number. It's the Christ consciousness number. Now, if he was to successfully work through the healing process of that 45 nine, he could very well uh, say that his power was the power of the Christ consciousness, the 33, another master number. He has an 11 soul and a 77 outer personality. And now we have this 33, six, this is the vibration. This is fighting off all comers, but it's about having a moral high ground. I have to say this man does not have the moral high ground. So now we move into his wisdom square of which he is in. He is in the wisdom square along the line from age 63 to age 72. Um, the wisdom square is the wisdom that he garners from um, his experiences, both his, his pain from the youth square and his ability to overcome that pain through 60, 33 over six would be responsive, resp uh, an ability to respond, community, love, sacrifice, raising all boats, all of that stuff, right? 33 over six, but that's not really what he did. So his wisdom square is the 66 over three. And the 66 over three is this vibration. It's the queen of pentacles, this is Mother Russia. He is terrified, and, and I didn't know this, but uh, he is terrified of the people of Russia coming onto the streets, okay? He is, he's terrified of revolution. And uh, I learned that from um, uh, Marsha Gessen's um, interview. So, very, very illuminating. And if you are an astrologer out there, uh, I would listen to the interview and look at his chart while you're doing it because you will see connections as she speaks where, it, where it's expressed in the chart. It's a great way to learn some astrology and see, because astrology really is the, um, is, is, is observation and correlation. You observe what's happening in somebody's life and then you correlate it with what you see in the chart. Incidentally, I don't know if you noticed, but I have my rainbow scarf behind me here. And uh, in, in honor of uh, people flying their flag, whatever it might be, this, this uh, terrifies Putin. It terrifies him. So, um, Yeah, so, so he is afraid. It's interesting, I did a card reading on Putin not too long ago and the queen of pentacles came in as his hopes and fears. Um, and I think, and somebody said, well, what do you think that is? And I said, I think he's afraid of women. He's afraid of what women bring in. Then he would have to face his shadow. He would have to face his inability. I mean, love could be available to him if he would just open his heart and open his arms to it. What he really needs, honestly, and I, and some of you are going to get mad at me for saying that this, but I'm going to say it. What he really needs is a big fat hug. He needs one of those, like a bunch of like women, just like going over there and just giving him a big, you know, these, maybe even these like big, like motherly, like Russian women, like give him a hug and, and uh, breathe all over him and, and, you know, get, uh, um, I think that's what he, that's why he doesn't want anybody near him. Cause he knows that uh, if they, if, 
if if they come near him, then he's doomed. And it's not, and I mean, maybe it'll be, you know, who knows how he's gonna, he, his demise is gonna happen. Um, but it would be, it would be funny if he was just like hugged, <laughs> cuddled to death. I know you got what you're thinking, but it just, it's a funny thing in my head. All right. So um, we, I also want to point out that uh, over here, this is called the pinnacle. And uh, this, this, the first pinnacle 17 over eight went from uh, age zero to age 29. Uh, from 29 to 38, he was in a 24 6 vibration. 38 to 47, he's in a 41 5. And now from age 47 on, he's in that 27 9. The 27 9 is the Ace of Wands. It's the Ace of Wands. And when we look at the, uh, the Tree of Life, we will see, we, I, I have it on there. So we can, we can take a look at it. The other thing I want to point out, oh, and from age 63 to age 72, he's on the 18-9 line. This is the moon card in the tarot. How many times has the moon card come up for people? R watch all the readers. The moon keeps coming up. The moon keeps coming up. The moon keeps coming up. This is his vibration. And the moon really speaks to us of understanding that you cannot save somebody who's not willing to be saved, that people need to save to a certain extent themselves. It also has to do with the emotional ups and downs and an understanding of that. Um, but that's another conversation. We could talk at hours about the moon card in just in general and then how it, how it applies to this guy. So the other thing I wanna show you is, is two things. In 2013 on his birthday, he moved into a 23-5 vibration. The 23-5 vibration is the king of wands. The king of wands. So this is somebody who believes, uh, who leads based on what they believe, right? What they believe. Um, in um, March 18th of 2008, 14, which vibrates to a 28-1 vibration. That's actually an Aries vibration, 28-1. He invaded Crimea. That would have fallen right here, right here. And so he was in this King of Swords, I mean, King of Wands vibration. And he started Crimea when he was in a 13-4 subperiod, which is Scorpio. This is a Scorpio vibration. This in the tarot is the death card, is the death card. He has a Scorpio ascendant and he has Venus in Scorpio. Very often Venus is what you value. And in Scorpio, you can value, you can covet what other people have. And he certainly coveted Crimea. And so he went in. So that war has been going on. Now we come down to, and it's almost hard to believe that it's been going on that long, but certainly the Ukrainians know that it's been going on that long. In 2021, on his birthday, he moved into a 22-4 vibration. This is the fool card. This is the leap of faith. Four is crisis and opportunity. 22 is master spiritual builder. This is bringing the light of spirit to create a structure to hold the new light in 22.4. Now that is what he is channeling. That is the energy that he is channeling. Is it his intention to bring light to the planet? I don't know, but certainly the vibration is there. So the things that he's doing on some level are bringing us light, is, bringing, is, is illuminating something for us. And that is something that we need to uh, look at. What is he really showing us? You know, what is the soul showing us? Besides the fact that he's a jerk, what else? What is he showing us about ourselves? Because everything on the outside of us is a reflection of what's on the inside. So what is Putin showing us? Now he moved, he invaded Ukraine again in this sort of second period. This is when the vibration of the year is added to his path of life vibration. That's seven. We get a 12-3. 
This is the hanged man. This is suspension. This isn't the greatest energy to start a war. He had would have been better off starting it um, when he was in that 16-7 subperiod, the tower card here. But he did it in this, this 12-3 vibration, which is the hanged man. And so the hanged man requires us to stay connected to spirit. I do not think that he is connected to spirit in any way. In fact, when I did his chakra reading with Zelensky's chakra reading, I actually never picked a crown chakra card until, because I did the reading before I, I shared the reading with you. I had just been flipping through cards and this is what came up. And I'm like, I have to share this. I never got to the crown because he's not all that interested. <laughs> he's not all that interested. He has a lot of power. This this vibration here is very, very powerful. The 27.9, one of the most powerful, the Ace of Wands located in the crown. But if he is blocked because of his ego and he's not willing to take in the energy of spirit, how spirit moves him, uh, this is not gonna be of any use to him. Okay, so let's take a look at the tree of life because I think this is, hi, back. Oh, there I am. Uh, all right, let's share the tree of life here. Let me find it. I believe this is it. Okay, so this is Putin's tree of life. Couple of things I just wanna go quickly over with the tree of life. One of the ways that you can utilize the tree of life is by overlaying the chakra system. And so we have seven sort of levels here. This is the level of the crown. This is the level of the third eye. This is the level of the throat, the level of the heart, the level of the solar plexus, the level, the level of the sacral, uh, uh, sacral chakra, and then the level of the, um, the root. You can take his planets from his astrological chart and you can put these on the tree of life. Each one of these paths is associated with either a planet or a sign or an element. And um, here we have, this is the path. This is the path of justice, Libra, the 11th card in the tarot. And he has his son, Mercury. Uh, he has his son, Neptune, Mercury, and Saturn all in Libra. So energetically via his astrology, this is where uh, he has a lot of energy connecting Gabura, the Sephiroth of Mars with Tipperet, the Sephiroth of the sun. This is the throat chakra connecting to the heart chakra. We have his Venus in Scorpio right here on this path. This is the Scorpio path connecting the heart chakra with the solar plexus. We have, um, uh, let's see, here's his Mars. His Mars is on this path. This is the path of temperance. This is the spiritual initiation. So his Mars is, is, is creating for us a spiritual initiation, a new way of whatever, acting Mars perhaps. This is the path of the mystic. Now, is he a mystic? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, he could have been a mystic in a previous lifetime, but he has chosen, I think, in this lifetime to, to maybe negatively express, but perhaps not. I mean, he's doing what he's doing. The, the consequences of that may actually really be about bringing in the light. We finally see the light on how stupid the way we've been living and the way we've been relating to each other and the way we've been relating to the planet. So on, he may be, um, he may be the person who really, you know, we, you know, you know how people are like, Trump is this, Trump is that. And then we come to the realization that perhaps we need a Trump to wake us up to something. Well, we need Putin to wake us up to something. This is, this is the awakening. 
This is the awakening. How can we do this differently? Venus and Mars are conjunct in Aquarius today. How do we relate in a different way? How do we relate in a different way? So we can take his, his, his numbers and put it on the tree of life as well. And so here we have his soul. He has his soul up here in Hokma. Hokma is the place of wisdom. It, it is the place of the divine masculine. People who have things in Hokma sometimes are blinded by the light. It's hard for them to see because it's just so bright. It's like there's no contrast here. Um, it is associated with the planet Uranus, the planet Uranus. His Uranus is in, um, where is his Uranus? That's so weird. I don't know that. Hold on one second. Oh, yes, in Cancer, of course. <laughs> Uranus in Cancer. Um Again, cancer is associated with nurturance. It's, it's associated with uh, motherhood and children. He doesn't seem to care much about mothers and children, especially not in places like Syria or uh, Georgia. Is that where he had his first sort of like attack? Um, or the Ukraine, right? Okay, let's get back to the picture here. Hold on one second. I'm just trying to find where I'm at. Okay, right here. I'm not always seeing what you're seeing. So, so we have, we have his, this, so this is the king of pentacles. We have it up here. It is located in his third eye. And so on a soul vibration, he is able in a way to manipulate his relationships because he sees from a, a different perspective here, a different perspective, the perspective of intuition. Um, his intuitive, on his intuitive plane, he has an eight on the intuitive plane. Uh, that is a cause and effect energy. His quiescent, right? His outer personality, that nine of pentacles is down here in Yisad. Yisad means foundation. This is associated with the moon in the chart. Um, he has his moon in Gemini. He has his moon in Gemini. So there's a duplicity here, right? What's, what's, what's true, what's not? And Gemini, we always ask that question. The relativity of truth, as it were. If I say it enough, does that make it true kind of thing? Um, we have his, uh, of course, his expression right here. This is the tower card. This is Mars completely in the solar plexus. His expression is 16.7. This is the soul. This is also, um, uh, this is Trump's soul vibration, the 16.7. So we can see connection here between, and, and, you know, in a way, Trump and Putin are um, kind of like mirrors of each other to a certain extent mirrors to each other. Um, we have his shadow down here in the root chakra in Malkuth. Malkuth means kingdom. Um, when you have planets, in, uh, when you have vibrations in Malkuth, you, you understand you both can feel victimized or you can be a victimizer. And as his shadow is there, it's more likely that he is the victimizer here. Remember I said that from age 63 to age uh, 72, he's in an 18-9 vibration. That is right here, 2015 to 2024. It's interesting that the whole Crimea thing, remember I said it felt like the darkness came um, onto the planet around 2015 with ISIS or ICER, whatever you wanted to call that, and, and all that energy. And they went into Iraq and they were like, they were attacking like sacred sites, goddess sites. There's something about Syria. There's something about Iraq. There's something about the Ukraine and the divine feminine that we cannot forget. And we do have to remember that the Ukraine is where Chernobyl happened. So there was a wounding of the feminine, right? A poisoning of the earth there uh, through man's. Um, pride 
and thinking that he could control the forces of nature. This path is the forces of nature. Um, but this is the moon path. So there's a lunacy here, right? There's a lunacy here. And so we have his power square here in Netzach. This is where the 33 6 falls. We have his shadow here. So this is, you know, what does he value? Scorpio, power and death. His power to create death. Um, okay, so up here, we have his pinnacle. Remember I said there's 27.9 up there, the Ace of Wands in the crown. This will only work if you're connected to source. His particular, the time that he decided to invade this time, he is in a 22.4 vibration. We have the 22.4 right here. So the 22.4 is the path of the fool. Incidentally, Zelensky's expression is a 22.4. Zelensky, the fool. Who's the real fool here, right? Zelensky is, in, in our typical terms, the court gesture, right? He was dancing, he was an actor, he was a comedian, he was telling funny stories. You know, one way, the, probably the best way to take down a dictator or to take, when you have that sort of narcissistic Leo energy is to make fun of them. They don't like that. The one thing about Trump is Trump didn't really care much if people were making fun of him. That was one of his superpowers. He was able to like just sort of brush it off and because he was so convinced of him own, his own self. But Putin, this, this bothers Putin. This bothers Putin. And so in this year, he moved into this 22-4 vibration. That is the uh, Ur this is uh, the 22-4 is Uranus. So we have the Uranus energy of his soul vibration, the king of pentacles, the Uranus vibration of um, the 22-4, the spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual master builder, master builder, right? So, so he has this energy coming in to his soul. Now his soul the king of, of pentacles is a Capricorn vibration. And so you might say, well, why isn't he bringing goodness? Well, what does he have in Capricorn? The Capricorn on the tree of life is right here. This is the devil card. He has Chiron and Capricorn. So he is actually expressing himself through his wound, his wound around authority, feeling he himself feeling disempowered trying to be powerful by being destructive, being the devil, quite frankly, being greedy, being so connected to the physical world that he is ignoring the promptings of spirit and, an, and a chance to open up to the joy, number five. Now, Next year on his birthday, he's going to be going into another 23-5 vibration. That is a change vibration. If he makes it that far, if he makes it that far, we don't know. Um, so I'm thinking that we, are, we have an opportunity now with this energy with him to um, become aware of the futility of the old ways of power, that they no longer will work because if we continue to go in that direction, we'll just destroy ourselves. That's the, that's the Thanos, right? We have to move in the direction of life. And that's what the North Node in, um, in Taurus is asking us to move towards. Let's move towards life. Let's move towards a better relationship with Mother Earth. Let's move away from Scorpio, this indebtedness to pain and suffering and war and coveting thy neighbor's goods and coveting thy neighbor's wife and all of that stuff, right? Um, and move into a more balanced state of affairs. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. And Venus 
just went through a retrograde period where she met up in, in, in one of those during a retrograde period, she met up with Pluto three times. And now she has moved, now she's at, at the same time that Mars was conjuncting Pluto and now they moved into Aquarius. So, uh, ooh, I have a sandwich, All right? I'll take that, thank you, babe. I'm a little, little part. Okay. So, um, so, okay, so let's, let's, let's just pull this down for now and, and see what else we can say. Um, I would say that um, the key to overcoming the problem that we have is unity, is unity. And that unity will come through uh, everybody besides Putin coming together to really stop him. And um, let me um, let me just see if I can share one more thing with you here. Um, I just don't know if this is the chart or not. Let me see here. I have a chart here that I think is instructive. Is this it? Yes. So, this is, this is how we undo Putin, okay? This here is Putin's chart right in the center. We recognize it with all his 12th house planets. This is his progressed chart for um, actually March 2nd, which was the day of the, the, the new moon. Uh, it's not gonna move around that much. Progressed charts take a while uh, to move. So this, this could as easily be the progressed chart for the day of the invasion. Um, the interesting thing about that is that his son has progressed within three degrees of his Mars. Now the sun moves about a degree a year. And when you're do, when you're looking at progress charts, the orb is a, is a degree. So the sun is, is approaching Mars, but it is not, it hasn't activated that Mars yet. It, not really. Okay. What has been activated is that his 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 Mars, his progressed Mars has moved to here. That in fact is conjunct and within orb, now it's within the degree of his north node in Aquarius in that third house. This is your neighbors. <laughs> this is your neighbors. So Ukraine is Ukraine, the word Ukraine, I believe, means little Russia. And Belarus means white Russia interestingly enough. Um, so we see that his progress Mars is now on his North node. So he is, he is, he is become, he is doing his destiny, right? That, that 16, seven expression vibration is he's expressing himself. What's over here, however, and this is the day of the invasion, which uh, February 24th, we, this is the transiting chart now. The outer one is the transiting chart. We have Saturn. Saturn is the planet of stop. So he is expressing himself in a negative way, perhaps. And the world is saying stop. And so the more united we are, the more, the better chance we have of taking this guy down and allowing him to learn the lessons that he needs to learn. The other thing that's happening with this, this progress chart is here we see his Venus. Remember Venus was connected to that power square, that, that energy of NETSAC, the 33 over six, the seven of, seven of wands. Okay, that's the Venus there. Well, natally he has it opposite uh, Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter in Taurus can, you know, is an expansion of this can be a hoarder. This can be somebody who's, not, you know, enough stuff is never enough. Enough money is never enough. It's like, can be a black hole. In fact, his, his Jupiter is square his nodes. So his Jupiter is a focal planet in his own chart. What do I believe? What, where, where do my values lie? Well, the resolution node for his Jupiter is the North node in Aquarius. 
So his riches would have would lie in the future of raising all boats, but he has not done that. He has insisted upon the expression of the past here. And this is why he will not succeed. He will fail. So what's happened since he since his birth is Jupiter has actually moved back. And Jupiter is now in an opposition to his natal uh, Venus, exactly, exactly. Opposition is enough, enough. What's enough? What's enough? It's relationship, right? This is his relationship to others, it's his relationship to the world. And transiting right over here, lovely as can be, is Uranus and Taurus blowing this whole thing up, blowing this whole thing up. So we must stand strong against his oppressive ways. Now, does that include um, more war? Does that mean we have to escalate the war? Um, I think that we have to be very careful about how we approach this. War does not, war begets war, period. It's important that we arm the Ukrainians, but they're fighting for their freedom and their right for self-governance. We don't want this to become a proxy. And it's very, and, and it's, it, it, people make a lot of money during wartime. And that's not what we need. We need to take the resources, not put it into war, but put it into the structures that are gonna foster peace. And so humanitarian help is very important, if not more important than the military help that we give them. In the crisis, they need to be protected. I understand that. But once the crisis is over, we don't wanna keep feeding that beast because then Putin wins. Even if he doesn't win personally, his way of being and his way of thinking will win. And so that's what we have to be aware of. And that's what we have to work towards. We have to work from the place of acceptance and love and compassion for both the humanity of those people who are suffering and also the humanity of the, vic the, vic the victimizer. So if anybody knows some really husky Russian women who are willing to give Putin a big hug, please, Go do that. Um, in the meantime, we will continue to pray for peace. We will continue to hold that area of the world and those other areas of the world that are suffering through this in a, in, in, in a bubble of, of, of love and compassion that, that when they need help, they will get the help that they need. And let's give thanks to the souls who have sacrificed their lives in this particular incarnation in this particular time to show us a better way. I hope this you find this helpful. Um, last night I was I was listening to Cash Peters and he um, he wrote, he wrote back to me and said in my astrological opinion when is this going to be over and uh, I say it can be over in a moment. It depends on how willing we are to open our eyes and, and see things in a different way and come from a place of love and compassion. And like, like uh, I've always said, you know, up above, down, inside out, that is the energy that we need to express. We need to fill ourselves up with light and push that light out because it empowers us and, and it empowers the, the, the sphere around us and all our spheres are bumping up against each other. If we're all in this love place, it actually potentiates. And we are, um, to answer, um, I think, Hesh's question, we are warriors of the light. This is the way that we take care of things through the light. Archangel Michael is a warrior of light. He has a sword and he has a, a, um, um, a scale. And so we are, we are the people that we've been waiting for. 
um, we all are the people we've been waiting for. It's not just the people who are awake, but it's everybody. We're here to experience this together. We're here to evolve and um, in a way ascend. That doesn't mean we're leaving our bodies. Some people do. Some people, it's time for them to move on to their next adventure. But for those of us who are still here, it's really about holding the space for love and holding the space for peace. And I'll leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. This is the type of reading that I do for people. You don't have to be Vladimir Putin to get one. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be nice if you actually listened? I don't know. Is that, that That's a little scary to me. <laughs> it's like, who that lady? Let's go get her. I'll hug him though. If, you know, I would hug him if he could. And I think, I, I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't like it, but I knew it would be my duty. And I'm not Russian, but I'm a little burly. So, so I could, I think I could do. <laughs> all right, guys, this was a lot of fun. Uh, much love to you all. And uh, just hold the space for peace and whatever you have to do in your own life to bring peace, that's where you have to start. So whatever is, is giving you angst, besides like all the angst that's out there, uh, there's plenty of angst out there to go around, but but find out what it is in your own heart. What what, what is it that that brings you dis, dis ease and figure out a way to balance that and bring in the love. The way that I do it mostly is through gratitude and uh, doing what I love. So when you find yourself most nervous, you know, do the thing that you love the most and uh, we'll make the world a better place. One uh, maybe not so random act of kindness at a time. Much love everyone, namaste.